Hello everyone, welcome to this session of Talking Tech, Women and Girls in Information Communication Technology. My name is Camila and today I'm so delightful to have a wonderful discussion with Ms. Ruandi Fernando, mm. who is technological entrepreneur in MS Holdings and she's currently reading for a PhD degree in biophysics. So more deeply, we'll um, discuss about talking tech uh, as a celebrating girls and women in tech. It's being recorded around the world between girls in ICT Day 2022 and ICT Day 2020 uh, day. Girls in ICT Day is an international day celebrated on fourth Thursday on each April. Uh, the main goal of this is to help and create an uh, environment for uh, young women and girls to encourage them to consider studies and careers in the field of information communication technology. So the Talking Tech series is brought to you by the ITU UN ICC and the Office of the UN Secretary General's Envoy on YOS and is in support of EQUALS, the Global Partnership for Gender Equality in the Digital Age. Hi, Mr. Wendy. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, to kick things off, would you mind to introduce yourself uh, to explain what is your job and more deeply in details uh, what is your current position. Sure. Thank you Camila uh, for having me in this Tech Talk interview and for the introduction that you gave. So I'm currently uh, working as a technology entrepreneur at MAS uh, Innovations which is the central innovation arm for MAS Holdings known as Twinery by MAS. Uh, I started off my career before joining uh, MAS as a trainee geophysicist at Petroleum Resources Development Secretariat doing seismic exploration activities, looking at uh, potential petroleum prospects. So that's a very brief introduction to myself about uh, the job that I'm doing and what I have done before in terms of before joining MS Holdings. Thank you so much. It was um, very interesting. Your job is full of amazing things. So uh, let's move to the, our first question. Uh, I wanted to ask you about how did you start your career in tech? What was the first steps to the, the technological career? Sure. So uh, from small days, I was always inspired by uh, science and uh, technology. So I was always curious to know why a certain thing is happening. So I think uh, that uh, led me to be in more like a, a technology, science related, STEM related field, I would say. So how I started off my career is that uh, right after my uh, basic degree, uh, in physics, I joined uh, as a trainee geophysicist, uh, Petroleum Resources Development Secretariat. And after working for a few uh, years, like one and a half years, uh, I got this opportunity to join MAS Holdings. Uh, I joined initially Bodyline Private Limited, which is also a subsidiary business unit at MAS Holdings which was mostly into manufacturing. And uh, I was exposed to a lot of uh, new manufacturing technologies in the textile and apparel field, which was completely new to me. So it was a pivot that I took coming from physics, doing certain uh, job of certain work packages in uh, geophysics, and then started off uh, as a uh, executive joining uh, Bodyline Private Limited. So there I also uh, learned and got myself exposed to a lot of different uh, 
brands and top brands that we cater to as the biggest exporter. Uh, and also like I had the freedom of uh, learning things about different products that they use and different technologies that the products have. And also uh, first two years I worked as a uh, quality process control person where I looked at the entire uh, process and try to develop uh, and finally they developed a managed quality management system looking at uh, how well we can improve the system and at the same time uh, there were certain products that we want to look at in terms of how we can go to uh, risk mitigation risk uh, uh, risk free product in the production line. So there were a lot of uh, certain technologies and certain uh, decisions that we have to make uh, using different technologies. Considering the material technologies and things like that when we pass on a product to the manufacturing system. But after that, I joined the innovations team where I was predominantly working as a technology entrepreneur at Bodyline for like two and a half years and then joined uh, Twinery uh, in 2020. Currently, I just completed two years working there as well. So when it comes to the work and uh, the career in terms of technology, so here we looked at, uh, we generally look at how well we can use technology, certain uh, technological solutions that we can give better user experience to the consumer because whatever said and done when it comes to textile, it ends up by uh, consuming by a certain barrier or consumer. So we look deeply into a certain technologies and doing due diligences and things like that. And uh, that's how I started off my career and what I do, which we'll be discussing further in the next few questions to come as well. Thank you so much for um, sharing with us about your uh, start in technological field. Um, thank you for mentioning about management uh, and data analysis. It was really interesting to listen. Uh, what can you say about obstacles that you witnessed being woman in technological field? How is that? How how you feel yourself? Uh, not just the ordinary stuff, but as a woman, it 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 is different a little bit that for men. Uh, yeah, it's a very uh, common question that comes up very frequently, I believe. However, um, so certain. Uh, if you look at certain uh, societies, uh, certain companies, uh, sometimes we tend to think like men are more hands-on. Uh, they can do a lot of like, uh, like hands-on work and go to the field and do things and work with instruments, equipments and things like that. However, I'm so glad and uh, lucky to work in a, a company like uh, Twinery because uh, as long as you have that passion, you're always given that opportunity to be hands-on because as a person, I'm not much of a, a book-oriented or desktop research only oriented person. I'm always uh, open and I have that passion of going to the particular place and do the use the equipment and explore certain technologies which are embedded in certain products that we use. So that actually, uh, if you have that sort of a thing, I, I personally believe uh, difficulties that you face or rather challenges that will come to you being a tech uh, person as a woman in the field would uh, go away and I also, not that I haven't uh, faced any difficulties. So there was a lot of instances where I also had to like justify certain things, convince about certain skills that we as women, young girls 
have uh, who are listening to this forum. So if you have that passion, if you have the courage of uh, doing something by yourself, being hands-on, uh, I would say the difficulties would be much more less. Yes, it seems to me that women um, nowadays can convince uh, each other and be strong enough to uh, be successful, uh, to build a strong career, to have a strong experience in their field and be qualitative professionals. Thank you. Um, next question is about the uh, uh, life lesson that you learned along the way uh, working with technology. Can you share with us? Sure. So uh, currently I have around uh, eight plus, a little lower than uh, over eight years of experience in both uh, petroleum uh, industry as well as predominantly uh, seven plus years in textile industry working at MS Holdings itself. So uh, basically, uh, I've also had to take certain pivots in my career and it wasn't a rosy path at all. And uh, it was so very challenging because as a woman uh, in certain things, women are biologically set up in such a way that we have to undergo certain uh, situations, for example, the pregnancy. So no matter uh, what is said and done, like you can't uh, basically equal a man and a woman in that sense. Yeah. So, uh, but it was also a good experience. I know it's super challenging, but uh, it's also a good experience the how uh, when you look at your past, how you faced uh, being in tech field because you can't excuse yourself saying that you're pregnant and you can't do this particular experiment. I personally don't think that should be the way. And uh, during my first pregnancy, uh, I actually, I, I was involved in one of the experimental projects, which was uh, very strategic to our business. So I had personally, I had certain like uh, targets before I go on to my uh, go on my uh, maternity leave. So when I look back and after doing all these and after having a safe delivery uh, with the baby, I was so happy uh, about uh, how I went through that whole uh, situation and different learns. Uh, lessons I learned throughout this situation. And uh, all in all, uh, uh, all that I have to say is like, if you're passionate, uh, if you're really happy about uh, the contribution that you make uh, to the company, to the society, and if you're really uh, dissatisfied about these things, I feel, uh, you can play a major role, whatever the industry you are at, uh, despite of you being a woman. Uh, those are kind of the things uh, that uh, basically help me to uh, be the person who I am today. And definitely there were sort of a lot of obstacles and lessons that I learned, which I shared. And uh, none of those were impossible now when I look back at those things now. So as a person, if you can happy about what you have done, I think that's the biggest blessing you have. You're so strong. It's so nice to have a discussion with you because you can could help with uh, your pregnancy and your work, your target with experimental project. It's it's amazing, mind blowing. I I can I can imagine it. How I or our girls who watching us will uh, cope with extreme situations and their um, uh, nature. It's very very strong. Thank you for 
sharing, sharing with us. Um, I wanted to ask you about your role models in the beginning of your career when you uh, was a student, uh, when you were um, studying, only studying so uh, technology and role models now. Uh, when you expert of your field, when you a, te a technological entrepreneur, and who is now your role model to compare uh, when you was young and now, can you please share? Sure, Camilla. So uh, when I was young, meaning like when I was at university. Uh, there was a professor uh, who is now a emeritus professor for physics for Sri Lanka. Uh, was my role model because uh, he was my uh, undergraduate supervisor, and uh, he is the one who uh, led me to work more in geophysics and uh, the internship I had with uh, PRDS. So. Um, he was also more into uh, science and he was obviously coming from a physics background and he was also into new technologies even though he was a little older even though i had a good uh, number of years of age gap but i learned a lot from him he was really uh, into the novel technologies and industries and uh, he was the first person from the entire university to be happy that I got to hear that I got selected to MS Holdings because uh, everyone wanted me to pursue my higher studies right after my basic degree, uh, go to the US or see or uh, do my PhD and come back. However, I as a person, I wanted to stay in Sri Lanka and uh, do something to the country. Uh, basically right after my degree. Uh, as a result, only I got selected uh, to MS Holdings. And he's like the, uh, that kind of a personality is, uh, that he had, uh, who was my uh, role model at the beginning. But now uh, after like uh, seven to eight years of experience in the industry at MS Holdings, uh, there's a, person whom I admire a lot for her capabilities in the technology field and also for the person who she is today. Uh, it's not only about her uh, degree or how she manages things. However, it's about how she looks at things and bring the best out of uh, everyone, supporting the business in the best way. So she's currently a, a director of technology for Twinery. Um, and I, I tend to learn a lot of things from her with the interactions I have because she is like a very focused and a very uh, straightforward person when it comes to work. And uh, because we are also working in such an environment that changes very rapidly. So we have to be very aware of different technologies, even though we work with fabrics. And there are a lot of dif uh, different technologies involved with uh, this fabric material, which starts from fiber to then comes into yarn and then comes into a form of fabric to this 3D structure. So uh, what I learned or uh, the role model that I have now is she uh, who looks at uh, how we can give that use different technologies that we have out there, how we can give that best product solution to the business in terms of work. But at the same time, uh, I know for a fact that she's a very fun loving person as well. So I really like that balance of uh, such a director because uh, when it comes to tech, what I feel is like most of us as techies, we, uh, we are so into like tech related things and sometimes uh, 
certain like that multidisciplinary skill sometimes misses out. So in that sense, I really admire and I learn a lot from this uh, director of technology who's also a woman and she's very inspiring. So she's not like that person that boring te uh, technological stuff. She is, she can uh, have fun and also work with um, strong and difficult things in a huge holding. Yes, yes she's your absolutely. boss. Uh, actually, she's my. Uh she's the lead of RT, like my, not my direct boss, but she's the director of like my boss is report, uh, reporting to her. Uh, but she always have that interaction with us uh, in our like uh, organization. We don't have that uh, hierarchical based mindset. We can always talk to each other, challenge each other. So it's a very uh, uh, open culture that we have uh, where I can even go straight to talk to her and even the CEO. So that's a very uh, nice way of us working because we have a bunch of different experts working together in which we can like talk to each other at any one time. So we tend to talk about certain tech things no matter what our positions are. I wish all of us can combine uh, fun and seriousness as your uh, colleagues and you itself. Thank you for sharing with us uh, who was your role model in the past and now. Uh, right now, I want to uh, ask you um, what about uh, advice for our girls who is listening to us, who is watching us, uh, since that series about girls and women in technology field, can you share, give some strong advice that will us uh, encourage to right now to study hard, to make some research, not to just sitting and waiting for something? Sure. So I think throughout uh, most of our questions, I've covered most of the things that I'm going to say now as well. So as a woman or a man, despite of that, I believe everyone, uh, if someone is multidisciplinary, not only into uh, studies, if you're studying, if you can just balance your uh, schedule value, can also allocate some time for sports, aesthetics, singing, dancing, music, and all of that. I believe that type of a person will definitely perform really well in studies because the uh, different uh, characters or personalities that you meet in these different areas that I mentioned, sports to aesthetics, that will help you to learn a lot. And that will definitely help you to grow as a person. And uh, for me also, one of the fears that uh, even my professor had was like, I was so into uh, extracurricular activities and uh, he wanted me to stop at the la final year. So because uh, simply assuming that I won't be able to balance out anything. But uh, luckily, uh, fortunately, I believe, not unfortunately. So I was a post-batch top doing a lot of uh, sports uh, work as well as aesthetic work uh, at university. So, and when I uh, look at myself now with the challenges that I face in a different state of my life, I am so happy about the things that I did when I was a university student where those qualities that I inculcate in my personality have really helped me to face my challenges in life because I have a kid now. It's a different, I'm working in an office environment, corporate world. That has helped me a lot as a person. So, you know, uh, as an advice for young girls, 
who are listening to our program, uh, don't give up anything in life. You might see uh, things as impossible tasks and there, there could be a lot of people coming your way, demotivating you, saying that you can't do this, that and etc. However, if you have the passion, if you're trustworthy to yourself and to the company and to the society that you're working, uh, I don't think anyone can stop you. So go for it, go for your passion. Thank you so much. It was so inspiring. I uh, really recognize that you are um, a very complex person that combines uh, life balance with work. Um, I believe all of girls that watching us will listen to your advice, to your uh, life experience and work experience um, and the last question that I want to ask you is about the uh, future. What can you say that uh, technology um, is rapidly uh, developing nowadays right now and what do you expect from now, five years from now, uh, what ex how industry will change uh, and what pros and cons will witness those girls that are now studying at university or graduate and finding job and after five years, uh, how the industry will change and how they will what challenges they will witness? Sure. Uh, so, uh, I will start with an example. Uh, basically, if you look at cutting a surface, uh, we use, we usually can use a knife as a, it's a solid that we can use to cut a surface. But nowadays, there are certain uh, cutting technologies or mechanisms that uses liquid. Due to liquid pressure, certain surfaces are being cut. And uh, even using certain uh, art pressure in terms of air. And in the future, it could be something like uh, an electromagnetic wave, uh, like an IR or a UV, which is also in uh, research form. However, whatever the technology that is being used currently of five years, uh, we have to make sure that we give the right experience to the user using the best or the most applicable technology at that time. So we all know that uh, the evolution of technology is massive. But industry to industry, it's different. If you look at IT versus textile, it's totally different. Where textile is very low in terms of going into digital market, whereas IT, it's evolving on like every second, I would say. So what I have to say is like, uh, even in five years time, if we are to uh, look at how well we can use technology because technology or whatever the uh, thing that we come up with develop will be used by a consumer or uh, if you look at a uh, product that you wear by a wearer. So whatever the technology in whichever the field industry that is being used, we have to look at to which consumer category that we are uh, developing this solution for. What is that exact consumer need that we are looking for? And what is that ideal state of the need that the consumer will look for? We may have to look at uh, these uh, consumer needs basically and look at the best technology at that time how in, in order to uh, enable the solution that we want to cater to these needs of the consumer to give them a better a uh, new user experience. So that's kind of an advice I have to give 
uh, these young girls. Even in five years time, even though the technology is evolved, definitely, we have to look at why we are using this technology and we have to obviously use the technology in the right way. And to give that best user experience using the most applicable technology out there in the market at that time. Thank you for sharing the advice. Um, I, I hope that expectations uh, and uh, young generation will cope with the challenges of the future and uh, your expectation from that field, from technological field related to any data analysis to um, management or uh, ICT will help the youngsters to manage it. We, we will suffer and uh, I hope that most of us will um, provide uh, more rapid development, more, um, more benefits to the society and it will not uh, and uh, adults, more senior gener generation will not uh, say that technology is something harmful for environment. It will help and I hope that we will uh, uh, we will manage to create environment of, environment environmentally friendly uh, technologies and best solutions for our customers and service. So thank you for our conversation for discussion i i personally learned a lot from your experience uh how to be successful women um and i'm i'm not sure about uh how i will start my career but i lucky to say that um my future will depend on me. And um, after you said that uh, you work hard, you uh, try to learn extracurricular curricular activities like sports, like uh, everything different from technology. Um, I hope that it will help to other students to, so they will not uh, just uh, learning just focus on study, but they will focus on the self and build the uh, creative minds and creative leaders for the future. And I will be strongly uh, every day <laughs> working on myself and develop myself as a leader, as a prof professional in my field, in my fintech field. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All the very best for you as well, Camila. Thank you. So I want to say goodbye to our audience and good luck for your um, research and for your best career options. Thank you. Good luck, everyone.